Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, several different things we're going to be covering uh, this morning, just in a brief here, uh, looking at Israel, their continuing war against Hezbollah and Gaza, as well as Russia possibly using the father of all bombs in Ukraine. Uh, seems it's already in an area that's been devastated, no doubt trying to weed out uh, militants that they just can't seem to get out, at least militants in their view. Uh, also, we'll be looking at North Korea as a huge surge of young men rejoin or uh, actually join in the military there, uh, stronghold there, preparing for a war with South Korea there. Uh, first thing I want to take you to right here, and this is... Uh, I don't know if this is the guy that actually did it. Ali Saeed reposted uh, uh, Loki, uh, and I said, sir, we are looking for the baby killing technology. Uh, I thought it was a rather brilliant, I thought it was a rather brilliant uh, video here at an expo there, uh, Israeli technology being put out there, especially in light of the tens of thousands of children that have been killed in Gaza along with those uh, now rising in the thousands of children being killed in Lebanon. Uh, and of course, Israel using a lot of drone technology. The first stop is a Israeli drone military weapons company. Let's listen in. Sir, sir, we're looking for the baby killing technology. Do you know where we, he has the baby killer? Uh, do you have the, the latest baby killing technology, sir? We're trying to shred babies. You guys have the baby shredding tech? Baby shredding tech, you have the baby shredding tech, man? Excuse me, guys, we're looking for the baby killing technology. Do you have it? Sir, baby killing tech, we want to shred babies to bits. Can you help us? Guys, we're looking for the baby killing technology. Is this the bit? We heard this is the baby killing section. Uh, you have the baby oh, shredding. The baby <laughs> they shred babies up to pieces. <laughs> uh, sir, do you shred babies? Sir, don't touch I my phone. Sir, I don't care what you want, sir. I didn't ask what you want, sir. Took some courage to be able to pull that off there, and I'm sure the uh, security ended up escorting the poor guy out. But uh, I'm uh, I applaud his courage to make that statement there. Uh, we have here too. This is an American journalist. Sorry about that. American journalist there that uh, was actually put in prison by Israel for reporting. An Iranian bomb hitting inside of Israel, not far from Mossad headquarters. Listen to what he says here. This is the impact site for one of those Iranian ballistic missiles. And if you see the size of this crater, that's about 30 feet deep and maybe 50 feet wide. You can see all the debris around here. And to give you a sense of the targets for these strikes, that white building back there about 1,500 feet behind me, is the headquarters of the spy agency, the Mossad. This is the impact site. This man now is in Israeli custody uh, for reporting about Iranian drone they hit there. From what I understand, PBS had already reported these uh, particular impact uh, sites there. So why is Netanyahu uh, picking on this guy? Hard to say there. Uh, also, U.S. warns Israel of military aid cut if Gazans don't get more supplies. You, do you think I really believe that? Uh, I just don't believe that Biden would even for a moment stop the wave of weapons coming in, like the guy said, the baby killing technology, to be able to shred these children in Gaza. And now you're worried about supplies getting in? Why don't you stop the bombing? You have the ability to stop Israel from constantly bombing and killing all these children. In Israel, they, their claim is, is that on October the 7th, all these Israelis were killed. Yet your own former IDF rabbis included are clearly saying that you knew very well what was going on in Israel as you disarmed the settlements. Is it something that was allowed to just justify this war? And then after all, you had a year and you still couldn't get rid of Hamas? 
or was really the focus just to completely level Gaza? Then when, of course, the war is over, you can justify and say, well, we need to have all of you go to Egypt so we can rebuild your homes and no one will ever come back. That's the way it works. Hmm. That is the way it works. CNN reporting Israel's plan to strike Iran is ready. Let's listen into what CNN has to say rather here. Than later, sources are telling CNN American officials expect that retaliation to happen before the U.S. election. That's less than three weeks away. We're also hearing from a source that Israeli officials have their plan of attack ready, although Israel has not confirmed that. Meanwhile, Israel's military has resumed attacks on Hezbollah positions in Lebanon after a multi-day pause. One of those strikes killing the mayor of a southern Lebanese city. CNN's Jeremy Diamond is following all of this for us from Jerusalem. So, uh, Jeremy, can you just bring us up to date with, with these new strikes on Beirut and southern Lebanon? Uh, what do we know? Well, we are seeing that the Israeli military is continuing to relentlessly pound Lebanon with uh, airstrikes as they say they are going after Hezbollah targets. But of course, as we have seen over the course of the last couple of months in particular, as Israeli airstrikes have intensified, we are seeing a cost for civilians. And one strike in particular today uh, happened in the southern Lebanese uh, town of Nabatia. Six people were killed, 43 others at least have been injured so far in this strike, which actually hit a municipality uh, building and, and the building uh, housing, housing government administration, according to the Lebanese civil defense. One of the six people who were killed was actually this city's mayor. The Israeli military, for its part, says that it was targeting uh, Hezbollah uh, targets. It Everybody's Hezbollah. In Israel's mind, that is. Everyone is Hezbollah. You know, it is unspeakable, the evils. And then, of course, justifying it. Justifying this, uh, that this is God's war. I was watching an excerpt earlier uh, this morning how that the Zionist Christians are supporting they were playing Hagee's voice about all the pieces are on the board. All Everything is ready for Armageddon. And none of you seem to realize that it has been Israel that has instigated the entire thing. Even if you go to October the 7th, for, even for the fact that Israel disarmed the settlements, I played for you the Israeli who actually said it was so. He was military, an American. They disarmed the settlements. They knew, they had had the former knowledge the attack was coming, even according to the Egyptians that give them the attack knowledge. And still nothing was done. You know... This is a bit suspicious, if you had asked me. Oh, by the way, this, the, uh, this is interesting. Best laid plans of mice and settlers. Israel recognizes the new Zionist king of Iran, CIA, and MI6 and Mossad are hoping to hatch a new plan to hand over Iran to a Shah's son, uh, Pehalavi Jr., seen here going to the uh, obligatory photo op at the Wailing Wall to make this work. They believe that uh, they just need to ignite a major sectarian war in Lebanon and somehow convince the majority of Iranians to take a knee to Tel Aviv. At least that's what Washington and Tel Aviv are hoping for. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? The father of all bombs. You know, we have in America the Moab, the mother of all bombs. Well, Russia developed what they called the father of all bombs, and it appears to be that that bomb may have actually been used in Ukraine. If you'll notice, though, this area here is an area that appears to be totally blown out, burned up as it is. So my thought is, is that uh, they are working on a stronghold and Russia figured the only best way to do it is just drop the, uh, a father of all bombs I guess you call that a FOAB on this particular enclave there there you go right there it is a massive explosive for a conventional weapon there um, and no doubt whoever was there is no longer there any longer 
War is just horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And right now, we just don't even understand it living here in America. But I can assure you that will probably not remain the same. Um, anyway, uh, the one thing I was trying to pick up here, didn't want to pie. Here we go. Thanks to Charles, he sent me this clip here. 1.4 million youth joined North Korean army this week. North Korea state media reported that 1.4 million young people, including students, youth league officials have enlisted and re-enlisted in the army. The surge comes as tensions rise on the Korean peninsula, with Pyongyang accusing Seoul of provocation, such as sending drones and floating balloons over, over the north. Recently, North Korea destroyed sections of the inner Korean roads and rail lines, warning that if war breaks out, South Korea will be wiped off the map. That photo, by the way, all these men uh, with no shirts on, wearing their uh, fatigues, uh, but uh, with Kim Jong-un in the middle and all the police surrounding him, guarding him uh, from the throngs of young men joining uh, the military there. No doubt a photo op for, yeah, for the uh, public eye. Yeah. Yeah, At the moment, uh, all right, it is... When you, when you get interviewed, obviously uh, that'll be your chance. Sorry about that. This was popped up. I don't know how it popped up there while we were recording as we were closing out our news broadcast. Uh, some man found guilty of attempted murder after a trial in Derby Crown Court there uh, for stabbing his wife there. That's what that talk was going on in the background. At any rate, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, I'll be watching closely with the threat that Israel is going to strike before the election, uh, only a few weeks away from now. So we'll be watching very closely to bring you live coverage here on Israeli News Live as soon as we see the first strike on Iran begin. Um, and of course, I need to really dive into this biblically. I am desperately writing on the book. Uh, I haven't even given it the title yet. I do know it is, of course, it's about the Antichrist. It's about the false uh, building of a third temple. All these things uh, really going into this deeply, setting the stage for prophecy, but it's not what we have been lied to to believe. Uh, and that comes as the, as I've shared with you more recently, that amazing discovery that the changing of the times and the law, it's not a law, it's a decree. It was a, king, a king's decree. And, uh, and then there was so much more still yet to be there. So it's really un unraveled for the prophetic timeline, what's going on. And now, obviously, there is a manipulation of prophecy to try to make it uh, transpire the way these powers that be want it to transpire so that you will believe these false prophets that have been leading the churches all this time. Stephen Benoit with Israeli News Live. Blessings to you.